Today I want to talk to you about the most important thing in the universe. Now I don't mean entity, because that's God by definition. No, this thing, this most important thing, this supreme thing in the universe defines who we are, and it defines who God is. It defines how we relate to God and how we relate to each other. This most important thing in the universe is love. Now, many times as believers, I'm sure that we've read verses about love, we've talked about love, but I feel like we've barely scratched the surface of true understanding of love. In fact, we could spend the rest of our lives studying love and still not completely comprehend it. Love is greater than any knowledge that we have. Love is greater than any theology. Love is greater than anything we could do or thing we could be. It's greater than miracles. And it's not just me saying so, God says so. Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 13. It says, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Not only is there nothing greater than love, but we are nothing without it. Continuing on in chapter 13, it says, And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Love is the greatest virtue, and without love, we are nothing. It doesn't matter anything else we do if we don't do it with love. Think about that. Think about that every day when you go out and live your life. That if the things we do are without love, they're meaningless. So love's first among the virtues, but also love is first among the commandments. So in Matthew 22, the Pharisees asked Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? And he says this, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. All the law and prophets depend on these two things, loving God and loving others. Love is the greatest commandment. That's what we're told to do. Now, not all of us know every single thing that we're supposed to do all the time. We could memorize the Old Testament, the New Testament, all the things that we've been told to do as Christians. Sometimes we just don't know what to do, but we do know this. If we love God and love others, we are doing the greatest thing. Everything else is subservient to that. Why? Because Jesus said, these are the greatest. There is nothing greater than these two commandments. That's it. Love God and love others. They should be foremost in our minds. When we're thinking about what to do and how to behave, we should love God and love others. So love is not only first among virtues, but it's first among commandments. But not only that, love is what we as believers are to be known for. If we look at John 13, where Jesus is giving them a new commandment, he says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, and this is the part that breaks my heart. It says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That's what we're to be known for as followers of Jesus, as Christians. We are supposed to be known for love. But what are we known for? We're known as arguers, 
people who are contentious, who will fight over things, who will argue over the most minute disagreement. We're known as a community of people that try to force other people, even those who don't believe in our God, to act like us. I know what we're not known for. We're not known for love. Now, I'm saying this as a group, as Christians, that's our reputation. Now, I know there are many wonderful, loving individuals who express love to God and love to others. But as a group, this is what the world knows us as. And it breaks my heart. Because it's the exact opposite of what we're supposed to be known for. We're supposed to be known for love. Let that sink into you. This is what we're supposed to be recognized as. When people see or hear that a Christian is coming, they should be expecting to be loved. All right, that seems maybe like that's a hard thing to do. Well, God is going to help us do it. If we look at John 17, where Jesus is praying for all his disciples, we see that God gives us his love. So Jesus is praying, and he says, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. So God's perfect love, Jesus prays that God's perfect love will be in us. And I know that if Jesus prays for something, it's going to happen. So Jesus prayed for that to happen. We can have that perfect love. Now, why would God give us his perfect love? Obviously, so we can experience him and relate to him in love, but also so we can share it with others. So now we have the love God has for us in us that we can share and be known by that love. But the next and biggest point I'm going to make is that God is love. Yes, that's really in the Bible. I'm sure we've read it many, many times. But let's look at it again. In 1 John 4, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Here it is telling you right here. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. The idea here is that we didn't love first. God loved us. This is the model for us. There are people out there who don't love us. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a few people out there who don't love us. Well, what are we supposed to do about it? We're supposed to love them anyway. God loved us first. He set us the example. He sent us his son. And so we should treat others like God treated us. God didn't care that we were angry at him. We didn't want him. God didn't care what we believed or what we did. He loved us anyway. And that's a model for us. So let's look at all these different scriptures now that we've looked at about love. Love is first among the virtues. It's the most important virtue that we can have. In fact, without it, we're nothing. Love is first among the commandments. If we love God and love others, we're keeping all the commandments. Love is what we're supposed to be known for. When we go somewhere as Christians, we should be known for our love. And God gives us his love. God puts his love in us. But the most telling point here is that God is love. It says, whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. How can the scriptures be any more clear about the importance of love? It's more important than anything. It says it several times in several ways. And I think that somehow we still don't get it. I've been thinking about this for a year now. And thinking about how to live in love how to act in love, how to experience love for others, for God. And I am convinced that as believers, love should always be first in our thoughts and in our hearts. 
So as you can see, love is paramount. Love is the most important thing in our lives, in our relationships to God and each other. But there's a few things I want to tell you that I'm not saying. I'm not saying that if you're in, say, an abusive relationship or situation, that you should just stay in it and take the abuse because you just love them. I'm definitely not saying that. I'm not saying that something else is greater than God. And I'm not saying that other things aren't good. We can gain knowledge. We can learn theology. We can learn and do a lot of things, but we just have to keep in mind that love is greater than those things. All right, so how do we love? Well, I don't claim to be an expert on the subject, but fortunately, we have the Bible to go to. So let's take a look again at 1 Corinthians 13. It says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. This is not easy. This is not an easy thing to do. But when we read that God himself has placed his love in us, it gives us the ability to do these things. But look at what it says. It's not proud. We shouldn't be proud anyway. None of us should be proud because there's only one type of person in the world, and that type of person we call in the Christian faith a sinner. Someone who is flawed, who has faults, who makes mistakes, who doesn't always live up to the standard of perfection, that's everyone. And so though we happen to be Christians, though we're saved, we should not be proud about that. Let's look at Ephesians 2, where it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. There is nothing you did to earn your salvation. There is nothing you did to save yourself. There is nothing that you did. It was God that did it. And so that means that as believers, we can look down on nobody. We never have the right to look down on anyone else for being what we call a sinner. Because we are the same, and the only difference is a gift we've been given. That's it. So in love, we are patient and kind. We're not self-seeking. We don't dishonor others. We don't look down on them because we know that we've been given a gift by God. And someone might say, well, what about those people out there? What about people who want to kill us? Should we love them? The Bible says, love your enemies. What about those who want to stop us from worshiping and take away our right to, to worship and, and pray and do the, the things that we do in honor of our God? What should we do about that? Love those people too. What about people who have other religions, who believe in other gods and think we should do different things than what we do and, and pray to other entities that, that we don't even believe exist? What should we do with them? Love them. What if they have ideas on sexuality that are different than ours? What do we do? We love them. We love everyone. That's what we're called to do. There's no list of people to love and not to love. It's very clear that we are to love everyone. It may not be easy, but it's the first and greatest commandments. Love God. The second one, love your neighbor. It's the first virtue. It's the most important. Now, how do we really love? We follow 1 Corinthians 13. But what else do we do? What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose, here we go, a brother or sister is without clothes 
and food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? We are called to meet other people's needs, physically speaking, food and clothes. That's how to love people. Love means caring for others. It means thinking, love in thought, love in intention. We keep around in our minds and our hearts the intention to love others when we see them. And love through action. One way to love through action is to meet other people's needs. Another way to express love is through our thoughts and intentions. If we keep love in our mind and in our heart when we move about through our day, we will soon learn to experience everything through love. And if we keep it in our minds, we will remember that the people we encounter are human beings and not necessarily adversaries. If we run into somebody who is of a different belief than us, has different opinions than us, okay, is our first response to want to correct them or change them or fix them without even understanding who they are. Because let me tell you, everyone you run into, every person out there has a reason for what they believe. They didn't just wake up and decide, I'm just going to believe this today. That's not what happened. They have an entire life full of experiences and actions and consequences and things that were out of their control that happened to them that make up who they are. And if we just walk in and try to fix them without even asking about what they've been through or their experience, they know we don't care. To really care for someone means to understand them. Instead of telling them what to do, we should ask them about themselves and learn who they are and why. I tell you what, I have seen and felt the presence of God among believers when they have loved someone. Love is a powerful thing. It is the greatest thing. We've already learned that. The presence of God and the power of God is there to change lives when we love other people. But when we walk in and tell them what to do and try to fix them, not so much. That's rarely when I see the presence of God. I see the presence of God when we love. Love means meeting other people's needs, physically, spiritually, mentally, and understanding others. Keeping in our mind love. When we walk around, when we interact with people, in our thoughts, in our heart, we keep love there. That love is so important. Now, I know... If you're like me and you've gone to church for many, many years, I go to church every week and they give me something else to do. They give me spiritual homework. And so after a year of church services, I had 50 things that I was supposed to do every week. So I'm not trying to give you more homework or more things to do, but I'm telling you this is the thing. This is the thing that if you do it, it's the most important thing and it's love. I feel like as a community, as a group, as Christians, we are missing the mark on loving other people. And I feel like the Bible is so clear on it, yet somehow we still miss it, and I, and I don't understand why. As we've seen, love is indisputable. It's unequivocal. You can't argue with it. The Bible makes it absolutely, completely, totally clear that love is it. Love is supreme. Love defines us. It defines God. It, we, it defines how we relate to God. It defines how we relate to each other. And it's the most important thing. In fact, it's so important if we don't have it, we have nothing there's no question about that when we read the Bible. There may be some other things in the Bible that are disputable, but this is not one of them. This is what we are commanded to do and told is the best thing. There's no way around it, and yet we miss it. But as Christians, I want to tell you, this is what we're supposed to be known for. This is the thing. 
Okay, this is our thing. We should own this. We are meant to love. It is the missing piece of the puzzle. It is the link that holds the chain together. It is the protection that we take shelter underneath. It is everything. And if we miss out on that, we miss out on being a Christian. If we have everything else and we don't have love, we totally miss out on being a Christian. We are called to be lovers. We are called to be givers. We are called to be like Jesus. We spend so much of our time focused on other things that are not love. We spend so much of our time worrying about other people that are different from us. Worrying what they'll do, what they'll say. When all we're supposed to do is love them. We're supposed to love everyone. It doesn't get any clearer than that. Love is the power of the gospel. For God so loved the world. It's love. There's no way around it. If you want to see lives change, if you want to see the world change around you, learn to love. Learn from God. Love every way you can, every day you can, every opportunity you can. Love and don't hold back. Put people ahead of yourself. Put put love at the front of your queue when you have a reaction to anything. Put aside all the things that you're worried about, your agendas, your things, and just love. That's what we're called to do. That's the power of the gospel. Love every day you can, every way you can. Love and don't hold back. Love like you really mean it. Like like love is the most important thing in the world. Do you know why? Because it is. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray. And they'll know we are Christians by our love.